what what are you afraid of? So because for me, uh, certain words have evolved. The meaning of certain words have evolved for me over the years. Okay, it, it's the meaning of love did them in the same to me at 10, then 20, then 30, then 40, then today with four kids. The meaning of competition was very different in my teens and 20s and 30s and 40s than today. The meaning of fear, fear for me recently has been very different. It's been a very different meaning of fear uh, uh, because fear, to me, it's been more from the perspective of, uh, I ask myself, why why in certain things that I'm doing, like why why do you not stop? What is the fear that makes you not stop? The biggest fear I had was the fear of my kids dying without them, one, with my dad dying without my kids ever meeting my dad, like because I never met his dad. So that fear drove the hell out of me, right? So I wanted to understand the relationship with fear. What was one of your biggest fears? Like, did you, you know how you go to sleep and there's that one nightmare that you replay in your mind, like, dude, I, this cannot happen. What fear haunted you the most? The fear changed over the year. When I was young and I wanted to become champion, it was the fear of being humiliated. You know what I mean? That was the fear. And that's pretty much the fear that I had for the most part of my career, you know, to be humiliated. Then it changed to the fear of maybe at one point, because you become more aware of, 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 of what can happen. You become smarter. And it's not necessarily a good thing when you're a fighter to not to be smart, but I'll try to explain the best as I can is you realize that, man, I've been doing this for a long time. You don't know the consequences of, of brain damage at, in long terms. And, you know, in my fights, I have generally always come, come on top or, or at almost all the time. And I don't get punched too much. But in practice, you know, you have to go through people always say, oh, uh, your fight or uh, you, you go, you, you beat your opponent pretty good without taking so much damage. It's true, but in practice, you practice every day. That's what, you know, to get hit on the head every day, the impact, the stress, right. the stress, I think it's, it's one of the things that we don't talk about. It's crazy. You're on fighter's flight, you know? Like to have a, 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 a little stress, it, it helps you improve, but to, to be on that crazy fear, stress of, of, of protection that, that is like a fighter's fight that you always have someone that, that you know in a, in a few weeks that you're gonna fight that might kill you. And after that person, once you beat him, there's another one and another one and another one. So you constantly feel threatened, threatening. And for me, I was obsessed. It's one of the things that helped me perform better is I was obsessed by the idea of, of, of being the best. I was obsessed and being a champion being a fighter, it's a very selfish life because everything is oriented towards you. Hmm. Me, 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 me. How oh, I can get better. If I do this, is it going to help me improve? I was com I was completely insane. Everything I, I was doing at the time was to get me a better fighter. And my perspective changed because now I'm thinking about the future. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to be I'm healthy. You know what I mean? How old were you when you started thinking that? I was a teenager. I was a teenager. When I first saw Royce Gracie, I knew that's what I wanted to do for a living. And immediately my life shifted. You know, I'm a, I've never been diagnosed, but I, I think I'm a little bit op, uh, obsessive compulsive. OCD. And yeah, OCD. I'm not the kind of guy who can open the door 10 times, yeah, you, know, yeah. you know, but I have these things, for example, um, the other, the, the give you some example, like, like how, how the brain works. And I think it's a good thing when you're an athlete, but in society could be a bad thing. For example, now I try to detach myself from that, but it, it's hard sometimes. Like I'm, I'm driving my car and I tell myself, and I tell myself, oh, I'm going to hold my breath for uh, 500 meter. And I, at four, four, uh, 450 meter, I hit traffic. I'm like, I'm holding my breath. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, shit, I'm going on the side. And yeah. I do with the extra 50 meter. And <clears throat> now I can. This is not normal, man. This is not normal. Because <laughs> you're playing a game crazy. with yourself. You're playing a game with yourself. I'm playing my game, but it's stupid. But shit like this, I, I do. But, but now I still. Yeah. Or the other day, I, I go to um, my cousin. I, I go pick up my cousin in at school. I'm opening the door for the parent that comes out with their kids. And I'm holding the door, and there, there is a kid that 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 comes and doesn't go through. He holds the door for me. He goes, "Go, sir." And I'm like, "No, no, you go, kid. You go, kid." Now he's like, "No, sir." And I'm like, "I'm thinking, I'm saying, if I would have been young, I was like, hell no, I'm not fucking moving until he go first." But he's like, "Kid," and I'm thinking, I'm saying, like, 
and it, it, it was hard for me to go. Did you I let it go or no? No, I, I went first and I lost, but I was like, it was hard. <laughs> this is not normal. But, it, but think my brain works like that. Yeah. It's so you had like a Russian standoff with uh, yeah, a when kid. Yeah, when a kid is like, like eight years old, like I'm holding the door and he's yeah. holding the door. He said, oh, go first. No, no, please go first. And his dad was there. I was like, then I was like, okay, thank you. And I played like, play like nothing ever, but in my mind, I was like, ah! If that eight kid, eight year old kid only knew, he's like. By the way, have you ever a... seen a movie uh, uh, Prefontaine? You ever seen the Prefontaine no, movie I, with I, Jared Leto? The, mar the marathon, the, runner. the marathon runner yeah. that would run like three milers, not one miler. He was yeah. like his coach is like, you're better at three. The whole Phil Knight story with the shoes. So there is a scene in the movie where he's telling these kids, so here you guys can run with me, and you're gonna practice and all this stuff. And he's at this high school, and he's an adult at this point. He's a champ, and everybody knows. And he's running, and this one kid keeps trying to get ahead of him. And he says, no, slow down. You can't run ahead of me. He says, the kid is 12 years old. This guy's 30 years old. So he keeps running. So he keeps trying to, you can't get ahead of me. You have to stand behind him. <laughs> he says, what is the, and by the way, psychologically, he did not want to buy in the fact that even anybody that could beat him, so they run at the end. He still tells the kid, you can't run ahead of me. So he keeps running faster than him. These are the little quirks of the goats that it's so hard to explain that somebody will write a book and will call you, you know, hypomanic, you're mentally yeah, we're, off, you're this, sick. you're that. Yeah. yeah. But the world admires seeing folks who are able to take the game to the levels that you took it to. I, I see it like a little bit like an like an addiction sort of. It's something that I needed in the past in order to perform in my field of work. But now I... I have to let go of these things. And mm -hmm. it's very hard to let go, man. Like, I, 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 there's little things that, like that that happened to me. And people don't notice it because I, it's, it happened inside of my head, but it's hard, man. It, like, like, like my, some of my friend knows and they play trick with me sometimes. They, they, like, like I'm eating sometimes and sometimes I notice I like everything lined up in my, in my table. And my friend, they, they, like, let's say I go to bathroom and I come back. They they they, 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 they <laughs> These, are, these the, are good friends. The, the, the configuration of the table and, and, and they they all laughing it. So when I come, I automatically put Straight it back. It up, yeah. And they all like ha ha ha, yeah. you know, like stuff like that. I mean, it, it's funny, but that's the the thing. I think it's part of my of my of my duty now to try to try to let go. Why let go though? Of this. Why? It, 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 I have to because if I don't, I will be able to function. And like it, my life has, has changed now. It's not about becoming the best fighter in the world. I, like I have to 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 blend in with the other people. You know what I mean? Otherwise, it, it could be damageable what, for what, me. But you're you're only 40, 40 years old. I mean, you 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 still got sixty more years to live. I, I agree, but I think it will not happen overnight. I need to I need to slowly adapt mm. to this, and I I need to release release. It, it, it won't be able yeah. to release everything from A to Z. I think it will take well, time so if you like this clip and you want to watch another one click right here and if you want to watch the entire podcast click right here